Good evening and welcome to the July 6th, 2022 meeting of the Lower Makefield Township Board of Supervisors. I am your chair, James McCartney. I ask that we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. The flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, individual, liberty, and justice. Thank you much. Let's do a roll call. Supervisor Grenier. He's here. We didn't hear you. Present. Oh, there you are. Supervisor Weiss. I'm here. Supervisor Blundy. Here. And Supervisor Lewis. Present in person. All uh, right. A reminder, public comment on agenda items will be taken as each item is discussed. And seeing that I don't have my, uh, my friend Kurt there for community announcements, I will, uh, I will take the lead on these. Um, during this portion of the agenda, residents and youth organizations may call in to make a special announcement or contact the township at admin at lmt.org to request a special announcement be added to the agenda. Lower Makefield Township will be hosting a new tween camp called Tween Adventures. Registration is now open. For more information, please visit our website, lmt.org. Uh, the Lower Makefield Township Farmers Market is back at Charlene Farms. They will be there every Thursday from 3.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m., June through September. And the LMT Walking Group is back for the summer, Saturday, June 25th, July 9th, July 23rd, August 6th, and August 20th at 10 a.m. The walkers will meet at the Community Center, located at 1550 Oxford Valley Road in Yardley. No registration is required. For more information, please email Kathy at walkapocket.com. That's W-A-L-K-A-P-O-C-K-E-T.com. Lower Makefield will be hosting a blood drive for the Red Cross on Friday, August 12, 2022, from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. in the main meeting room at the Township Building, located at 1100 Edgewood Road in Yardley. So moving on to agenda item number five, consider approval of minutes for June 1st, 2022. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Motion made by Supervisor Blundy, seconded by Supervisor Weiss. Any discussion? Any public comment? Hearing none, call to question. All those in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed, none. Motion carries 5-0. <laughs> Agenda item number six, consider approval of minutes for June 9th, 2022. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Motion made by Supervisor Blundy, seconded by Supervisor Grenier. Any discussion? Any public comment? Hearing none, call to question all those in favor. Raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed, none. Motion carries 5 nothing. Agenda item number seven, consider approval of minutes for June 15th, 2022. Do I hear a motion? So move. Moves. Motion made Second. by Supervisor Weiss, seconded by Supervisor Grenier. Any discussion? Any public comment? Call to question all those in favor. Raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed, none. Motion carries 5-0. Agenda item number eight, consideration to approve the Patterson Farm sign replacement. Um, is Bet Sovine there or is she in? I believe she's coming in now. No, 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 we're not. No, we'll make sure that. Yeah, we're not here. Hey, Bet, if you're there, can you uh, unmute your line and also come on the screen? Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you, but we can't see you. That's okay. Um, did you want to just uh, give a quick uh, update on the sign at, at uh, Arts of Yardley? Uh, at the corner of 332 and, and Mirror Lake Road is the Patterson Farm sign um, that goes to Thomas and Alice um, Patterson. And it's looking in need of repair and replacement. Uh, as part of a grant that AOI got from Visit Bucks County, we propose to uh, replace that sign uh, with an inclusion of the AOI Arts Center um, added to it and a directional sign. You should have a packet that from that I sent to 
uh, there we go. Yes, thank you, graphics person. Um, so that's what it would look like. And we would replace that. We would contribute um, $1,500 towards this. I, I believe the, the latest quote that we got from our vendor was something like $1,800, $1,900, and that the township would then cover the difference is what I had spoken with Greg about. Are there any questions? Any questions? James, members? Yeah, go ahead, Dan. It, I, I drove by there this weekend. Um, and Beth, can you, there, there's this, there's, there's one Patterson, correct me if I'm wrong here, please. Uh, there's one older Patterson farm sign that is similar to, let's say the top two thirds of this one, a little bit different, but yes. has the same information. And then there's a separate AOI sign near the AOI uh, driveway entrance. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And this one this one would go where it, it would this replace this both? replace the one at the corner 332 and mirror lake the one that's that's has the, what you said was the top two thirds okay okay but so the it's, main it's the main thing is and it's broken yeah you know? no it's it's in bad shape i hear what you're saying um but this the main difference is this one would add aoy to it versus um uh separately focused on the, the patterson farm preservation area itself right Yes. Okay. Right, will this will this be blue or it will be green like the old sign? Green like the old sign, just as you see it in the picture. It looks blue to me, and that's why. It's okay, it's green. <laughs> a flower make field green will be the background. <laughs> so, Beth, essentially, it's the existing the framework's the existing sign that's there uh, with a rider underneath that basically says A O R A O Y Art Center, correct? That's correct. Okay. Any other supervisor questions? I'll make a motion to approve the um, the new Patterson Farm sign with the inclusion of the AOI. Second. Motion made by Supervisor Weiss, seconded by Supervisor Blundy. Any further uh, supervisor discussion? Yeah, James. Sure. Um, I don't see a need for a huge debate on a sign, but I'm wondering, is there a possibility? I don't know that AOI is going anywhere anytime soon to, to, to the point, but um, is there a possibility to have, you know, make, make the lower Makefield preservation sign separate to stand out given the nature of, of, what, of the site? Well, this is the, the sign is being funded by a grant from AOI predominantly. So Beth just is said, grant, she, yeah, is it a grant from or to? That's what I, I just want to make sure. To, to AOI. From Visit Bucks County. Okay. I don't have a big issue with it. I'm just, I'm just trying to make sure that we cover our bases. That's all. I do believe there's another sign further down on 332 as well. That is just for the farm. The photo of uh former farmer. Any other supervisor comments? John, yes, John. Is, John is raising his hand. So yes. uh, can you put the image of the sign back up again? Uh, Bet while we're waiting for that, did Visit Bucks County review the design? Were they pleased with it too? You know, we included this uh, picture in our grant application. So, oh, okay, then then they clearly were. I have one modest requirement on this: at the footings of the sign, the current sign has the weed whacker has taken out over time the wood. This is a, also a wood sign as well? Uh, yes, the wood post, yes. Okay, so the one suggestion I would make is there are plastic inserts that you can put around the bottom that would protect it from the weed whacker. Because if you look at the current sign, aside from it being faded, there's like a good foot of weed whacking where it's like looks chewed up. Um, and if that, when, the, when that gets installed, we could have... Uh, 
um, those elements installed as well. It's de minimis, it's probably under 30 bucks, but it, visually in protecting it would be useful. Um, and, it, you know, uh, and since I am not a graphic designer or artist, I will not make judgment on the sign, but <laughs> it does look appealing and nice to me. But yeah. I can tell you that uh, Greg and I had been talking about the sign for some time. I didn't know that uh, AOY was working on anything. And it had been his hope that uh, we would be able to put some plantings around there. So that would help also with the issue you're talking about. So Ed, if you could let us know when the sign comes in so we could see if there's some additional things we can do to beautify that corner, that would be great. You mean a, a raised bed like we have at the AOI sign? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I'm sorry, the AOI sign at the driveway to AOI has no, a no, raised bed. Is that what you're talking about? No, no, specifically at uh, 3, 332 in Mirror Lake, trying to uh, yeah. you know, protect the sign and make that corner a little bit. Uh, yeah, I, I think Jim Majewski also said it might be moved just slightly to, you know, I, if you're OK, I'll work with Jim on on all those details. Yeah. Suzanne, just to clarify, I think what Bet was saying was a, a bed similar to what's at the AOI entrance on uh, at, at the driveway, something similar to, for this sign as well. Uh, yeah, I don't think that uh, I don't know how far Greg had gotten with talking, uh, designing it. So I'm happy to reach out when we have a new public works director and uh, maybe pick Greg's brain as well. Cool. Any other supervisor comments? James, here's a silly question. Are we, since this is, you know, we're, we're talking about his, historic farm and everything else. Um, are we certain that, are we certain we have all the naming correct here? The Thomas and Alice Patterson farm. I think we have the acreage, right? Is it, is it open space or is it a conservation easement? Is it agricultural easement kind of thing? Do we have all the right wording on here? I believe it's a copy of what is there now, and I believe it's accurate. Okay. Dave, do you want to just chime in just to confirm that the verbiage on the existing and this proposed sign are both um, accurate to I'll, what? I'll be happy to look at that. Um, uh, I, I'm not sure. I think a conservation easement is a mechanism to uh, create open space. So I don't know that they're mutually exclusive. And I'll look at the, uh, what, what's what's the number of acres? Is it two? What, what was it? 234. 234, 234. Yeah. okay. I wanna, and the only reason I ask that is not that open space is sort of a generic term. Um, it's sometimes nice to add the, the word agricultural to to a sign like this to, to show exactly what the, the the real goal was to preserve the farm itself. Um, so I'm curious what it technically is um, and if the wording could be, if, if that's what it is, if we could think about how to uh, include that in here. And, uh, and that if, it, uh, sorry, Dave, and if, does that affect the grant at all? Would we have to go back to them? No, for no Simple like wording. No problem. Okay. Okay. But do you do you get what I'm saying? Do I get what you're saying? Yeah. Sure. Okay. We'll put whatever you want up there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we need to know soon. You know, we need yeah, yeah, to know. Yeah. I got you. Okay. Okay. Well, I would suggest in the minutes should reflect that the motion would be subject to confirmation of the appropriate verbiage on the sign. I guess that's what we're talking about. Will the maker of the motion accept that? I of course. Thank you. And the seconder of the motion, I guess, accepts that as well. I think that was me. I'll say yes. Thank you. Any other supervisor comments? Is there any public comment regarding this? There, there are people in the room, but nobody appears to be approaching the microphone. Well, there's one on the line, uh, Dave says. One on the line. Can you bring them to Dave? Two on the line. <laughs> Hello, uh, could the caller uh, state their name and address? 
I don't see that they came through yet, Suzanne. But Dave is is telling me that they're there. So. Oh, they are. Okay. <laughs> Can you hit star six to unmute, please? Is that Laura? The PC Laura. Laura, please hit star six to unmute. It's Bet. Thank you. Um, I am. I'm just surprised by the. I'm, I'm sorry. Design discussion. Sorry. Can I, Laura? Can you just state your name and address for the record, please? Sure. Laura Tarantino, one eight five Durham Road, Newtown, PA. Okay. Thank you. And your comment, please. Yes, I was just. I'm startled by the fact that this sign changes is occurring without having a heads up or seeing any information about it. What concerns me is we're in the way in, in the pattern of trying to do the master plan for Patterson farm, which might mean that other organizations will be a part of this at one of the meetings, the person from the Patterson farm preservation um, made the statement about proposing the agricultural and historical Patterson Farm Center. And so it, this sign gives no room for anyone else, but obviously is a, the thrust is adding on the AOI Art Center. But with the plan to come down the road for the master plan, I think any sign should be primarily focused on Patterson Farm. You could have underneath it signs that could be changed and inserted placards that would indicate any other organizations that are involved within Patterson Farm. But the, to me, the critical part is Patterson Farm. It's in his, historic, it's noted for that area. It's the primary vista. The others may change. The others, there may be additional organizations. So I think this is like a jump ahead of where we're headed with the master plan. Um, I'd appreciate any feedback, but I just, don't understand. I, 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 I'm hearing a grant, and I think that's a lovely idea. But to me, the grant should have been um, proposed from Patterson Farm or from the township, not the art center. I, I, it just sends the wrong signal, a mixed bag of what this area is really uh, standing for in the community. It just is it, a confusing symbol to me especially with what we know might come down the road. And there may be other organizations such as the Patterson Farm Preservation may be a part of this. So they've made a proposal for the Southern Suede House. So this seems to be saying this is it. And I don't think that's the intention, but that's what I am seeing. Thank you for your comments, Laura. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other public comment on the line? There's one more, James. Thank you. Donna, could you please state your full name and address for the record? Yes, Donna Doan, 2814 Langhorn Yardley Road, Langhorn. Um, I have no problem with the AOI Center having a mention on the Patterson Farm sign. Um, certainly we can recognize that they're there, but I have an objection to them being on the main portion of the sign as the other caller had mentioned and as Supervisor Grenier had mentioned. Um, there should be maybe a smaller sign down at the bottom with the directional arrow or something to point people to the center. That's not a problem. Um, we did work very, very hard to get that farmland preservation um, easement, so certainly that should be mentioned. And um, we also have put money into the farm. We repaired one of the garages there at our own expense. So certainly we would like to have a mention there and a footprint um, on the Satterthwaite parcel for the Patterson Agriculture um, and Heritage Center. So I do think the sign as it is today is a little bit premature and I'd like to have a consideration for our group as well for the offer and proposal that we have put forth. Thank you. Thanks for your comments, Donna. Any other public comment? None on the line. Thank you, Dan. I think you want to say something else. 
Yeah, I mean, I get what everyone's saying. Um, the current sign is in bad shape, so that's a big part of the reason this is going up. Obviously, AOI would like a little more recognition at the corner. I get that. Um, it's a nice sign. I, what I two two things. Um, Bet if you could remind me of the overall cost of this sign, and then as a follow up to that, what the what our ability is to modify or replace the center part of the sign if if we have something in the future come up. I mean, if it's not a high dollar value item, how difficult is it to? to modify it at some point with either different names or a different layout or something like that, but without, you know, so that we can, you know, there is, I, I get the point about having a future plan. Other groups may come in other heck, maybe other sponsorships come in that want to give them some name recognition, whatever it may be. Um, it's a sign. It's nice to have a nice sign here, which I think this is rather than one that's falling apart or looks, looks bad. Um, it's just how big of a deal is it to either update or replace it in the in the future if if the plan has provides for for other other users that we should be giving recognition to. Does that make is that a clear question, Bet? Or well, questions? I, I think yeah. so. Um, the sign that we're proposing is a a vinyl wrapped sign, so um, that's the what you have there and it's lasted for, I don't know, 20 years. So we mm -hmm. follow the same style of sign. Uh, so, you know, it's under $2,000 uh, for the whole sign, including installation. So I, I don't think it's that expensive if you need to update it. Okay. That, that, and that's, that, that's what I thought you were going to say. I just want to make sure that I was, in, I don't, I don't put up a lot of signs. So I was curious <laughs> as to what, what the order of magnitude is there. That's helpful. Thank you. Any other supervisor comments? Hearing none, I called a question. All those in favor of approving the sign as proposed uh, by Supervisors Weiss motion, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed, none. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you so much, Bet. Thank you. I believe we are on to Andy. And you are there, Andy. I, I am here, present. All right. And, and, and in the flesh. In the um, flesh. So the first agenda item would be under the engineer's report is uh, consideration to approve advertisement for the administrative building renovations project. Uh, I've provided concept uh, design plans uh, for the, the building renovations, the scope of work, is to renovate uh, a portion of the administrative building here. Uh, that would be exactly one floor below where we are now. Um, that is, uh, the scope would be to uh, demolish existing interior walls, um, to rearrange the rooms that are, that are down there, um, add electrical outlets and lights, uh, upgrade the, the restrooms, and also, uh, changes to the HVAC system. Uh, it would not be an upgrade or a, a expand the size of the HVAC system. We're, we're still conditioning the same amount of air. It's just a matter of because we're changing the rooms, we would need to change uh, the supply and return uh, registers for the uh, HVAC system. So uh, we provided a uh, concept plan. There it is up on the screen there. Um, that's, uh, that's the existing floor plan. I think, uh, sheet three has the, the renovations. So I think they're coming up on the screen now. Uh, the one we have one, uh, we, we provided a uh, concept, uh, cost estimate, uh, that was $130,000. Uh, there is a minor change, um, within the, the plans that I believe, yes. So you can see uh, in, I would say the, the right side of the, the plan, there's the stairways that come from uh, this level down to the, the floor below. Uh, there's an immediate door that goes into the, the township scanning and conference room. Um, 
that door will be eliminated and that wall will remain. So uh, the, the, that we believe that's gonna reduce the, the cost of the construction and, and thereby reduce the scope. So uh, the plan is to um, put it out for advertisement. Um, and while I believe the, the, the construction uh, will take approximately six weeks, um, if we uh, allow the contractor the full use of that space, meaning that uh, the township won't be using the space while the work is being completed, and also uh, we give them a broader range for which to complete that work, that um, that provides us the best opportunity to get um, a, a, a reasonable price for, for the proposed work. And so that's the plan is to um, complete it before the end of the year. So we're asking for your consideration to approve ad, uh, uh, us to proceed with advertisement of that, that project. I make a motion for, to approve the advertisement for the administrative building renovation projects as described by our township's engineer. No second. Motion made by Supervisor Blundy, seconded by Supervisor Weiss. Any supervisor discussions? James. Yes, sir. Um, I get, so that all these, all these change, uh, changes, updates, modifications to the build to the this floor of the building are for the police department, correct? Yes, that's correct. So, um, I get. What's the plan for you know a lot down here currently? If folks are familiar, this is really there's that one back room where I think the if I can read the computer stuff and I think it's a poly room and some processing stuff is where generally where there's some file storage right now um you know, there's other otherwise it's just backup meeting rooms for for uh boards of committees etc not a whole lot going on down there besides the file storage but and then you have the the other corner you have the uh, tax office what's the what's the plan to address those items that are currently on that floor like where are we going to put our files and and all that stuff just so we we know where that's going um, I believe as part of the, the township scanning project that uh, uh, we've greatly reduced the, the number of files that were that were down there. Um, uh, that, to my knowledge, uh, eliminates the need for uh, file storage in that area. But um, I'm not fully aware of the, you know, the scope of the township's file system. And that's the primary activity that was on that floor, right? Other than the tax office? Yes, that's correct. And the okay. uh, tax, the tax office is basically remains the same and there's still access to a uh, bath facility bathroom for uh, the tax collector also. So that's not going to change. The only thing that's going to change is uh, the access to the bathroom. We have to uh, go through the back wall to get into that so that the tax collector will have a secure area to be able to uh, access the uh, bathroom area. So for, for residents now, Chief, the, the only access to the tax office, is that only through the back, sort of the back door off that, the back parking lot near the police station? Uh, no, it'll be the same access that the tax collector has. She now allows people, uh, residents, to come through her office and use the bathrooms now. But that will be now secure uh, access to the bathroom. Oh, no, not the bathroom. I'm sorry. It'll, I'm it'll sorry. Not the be. bathroom itself. But I mean, like, how do people access the tax office now? What's, 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 if I want to go pay my tax bill, do I go same. in the back door? Yeah, same way they do now. But I it's won't be able to change. go in through the front door of the township building, come down the stairs like I sometimes. No, no, okay. no, that'll all be a secure area now. Okay. Right. Is, any <laughs> modifications to the tax office area or are we just, other than the, the wall to get to the bathrooms and securing it off? No, no other, no other uh, changes to the tax office. Okay. Other than providing her access to the bathroom. Right. Do we? Do, are we going to be modifying any other floors? Any other floors? Was that the floors of the building? Do we need to modify anything else? No. The upper floor of the you know, Okay. And then I get chief. Once we do this, right? We got a. Looks like we got a bigger more. I'll say common space, common area in the middle. We've got a couple yeah. extra offices. Yeah, there will um, be offices for the uh, detective bureau. Okay, so now currently those guys are basically sharing a room. Yeah, they're all sharing so, a small room downstairs and yeah. lockers in the room and crime scene 
evidence and equipment in their room. Um, and even the locker spaces, uh, we've, we've outlived the locker spaces and everyone now has lockers next to their desk. Yeah, I've, uh, I've been down there. I've seen yeah. it. So it's, it's just right. good that people hear that. So they understand what we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so basically and, giving, giving people a add, elbow room. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, yeah, I just want to add in addition to that, um, it provides more safety for the, uh, for the building and for civilians in the building also because detectives now have a secure area to walk in prisoners and people that they're talking to and interrogating. And uh, there's an access now to set up video interrogation rooms that we didn't have before. So um, it provides for added safety also. And there'll be a secure separation between the, the I'll say the top, the main administrative floor where the manager's office is and everyone else and this one, yeah. right? Up by those stairs. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. I don't have any other questions. I just wanted to make sure that we had a plan for our files and that uh, people got their elbow room they needed and the bathroom access. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dan. Any other supervisor comments or questions? John, yeah. Yes, so, yeah, Andy, can I ask a, so what's exactly happening with the HVAC here? You're changing registers? Well, so uh, you have to supply air and return air to and from each room. Right. So as the walls are changing and the, the rooms are, are changing, uh, we would be um, bringing duct work from existing ducts and, and registers and, and providing us a, a supply right. register and a return register for each room. Right, but we've had a known issue with our HVAC now for a while where we've had failures in terms of cooling and heating. That's not gonna get resolved here? Um, to my knowledge, no. That's a big separate issue. Okay. But, yeah. Right. But to me that, uh, so we haven't scoped that out at all, right? Or have we? No, uh, changes to the, the system itself, uh, which is for the entire building, we, we have not scoped that out. This is just really uh, allowing the, the rooms to be conditioned um, right. in, in the proposed uh, layout of the, of the building. Yeah. So um, do you have a rough estimate of what you would think it would cost to fix the HVAC for the building? I believe that someone looked at that before, Fred. Now I couldn't quote you a cost for that, but I was last I heard was one point three million dollars. Yeah. One point three million dollars in that area, yeah. Okay, so that's so again. It seems to me that's something that would be prioritized and spend pretty high, um, uh, even maybe perhaps above this. Um, uh, so, and I have a question for the chair. Um, this was placed on the agenda and there was no supporting documents at all provided until this afternoon. Yet Andy's work product was from May 19th. So I have to ask why wasn't it included in the briefing documents for the supervisors uh, that was provided uh, Friday at five o'clock. That would have been uh, my error. Well, it, it's not so much Andy's error. I mean, this this was in capital projects under the budget. There was a presentation, a budget presentation done where this was mentioned and outlined uh, during the budget process. So all the engineering cost and all the cost for the building was included in that budget under capital projects and under various engineering line items. So it was in the budget and it was presented at that time. So this is a follow up so to that. It's currently in the budget, all existing funds yes. from my yes. show. Okay. So, but I just, in terms of timing, if I was the chair and I were putting this out on the agenda, I would want to make sure all the supervisors knew exactly the details of the project before asking them to review it. Right. Um, and we got nothing until today, right? So that's not a question for you you guys. I, that was a question for the chair. Why didn't the chair review all the briefing documents to make sure 
that supervisors had all the relevant information related to the project. Yeah, I received them today as well, John. So you would put something on the agenda without having them reviewed the documents yourself? Uh, I believe it was part of the budget from last year. So, I mean, I see your point. So I, I guess what, what's, your, what's the rest of your point? I, I'll let you finish your point and tell me how I forgot to put something on the agenda and how egregious it is, if, if that's what you want to do. Go ahead and finish up and then we'll go to the next comment. Okay, hearing none. Is there any other supervisor comments regarding this? Yes, sir. Uh, James. Sure, go ahead, Fred. Andy, uh, just on this air conditioning system, um, since we're gonna be changing the registers and everything in the second level, how much more would it cost just to clean the ducts in the whole building? In the whole building? Um, we just, you know, just to make sure everything's clean and cause I don't know when was the last time, I don't know when the last time we cleaned the ducts. Uh, we can look into that. I, I don't think that uh, we, we could certainly add it as a, an as alternate the, to- as I, as I remember from the budget, yeah. we, we, we budgeted almost $100,000 more, over $230,000 to do this project. I know that design and costs are, you know, are not in the actual right. list here, but how much money have we spent so far? We, are we still relatively under budget? Oh yeah, yeah. So, so can't we add as a bid alternate, <laughs> so to speak, uh, just cleaning the ducts? Cleaning. Once, if, the, if it turns out that these ducts are not clean, we may end up with a few more years of service on right. Yeah. Maybe we could do that though on a separate project though than this, not to do it at the same time because it's really a separate project if you're gonna do the entire building. That I don't know. I'm, okay. That's just the engineers. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's something, it, it, it is different people that would be doing that, uh, a different contractor, but yeah. yeah. So, thank you. Any other supervisor comments? James, can I? I, I'm not sure I heard the whole thing. Fred, I like the idea. Where, where did we, where did y'all land as having that as a bit alternate? It's a right. separate project. It's a separate type of uh, skill set as well. So it can be considered as a separate project. It's not part so, of the, it's, so it's more of a construction contractor putting in the new, the new duct work and an HVAC contractor that will clean things out. Correct. Sorry. Maybe doing an analysis of the existing system after it's done or before, you know. I, I think what I think the uh, HVAC contractor that comes in and, and uh, puts in the new registers could certainly look at it and provide an evaluation. Mr. Chair, is that would that be agreeable with consensus of the board? Yeah, I'm, I'm on board with that. The, the uh, we have the engineer look at that. Yeah, absolutely. Separately. Makes sense. Could we also have the engineer looking at getting us an estimate for an HVAC repair? And then uh, did we do a space utilization study that drove this, Andy, when you put this together? Uh, we were working with the space that we had. So it was basically a needs assessment from the township. And we then provided uh, concept plans for um, the feedback that we received from the police department, put together a concept plan, had them review it. Um, and then uh, they had a couple of comments. We adjusted some some items. Talked with the uh, uh, the tax collector um, to understand the, the her needs for uh, uh, accessing the restroom. Um, made some adjustments to the plan based on that, and that's how the the concept plan that you see before you is was derived. And if we were to experience say 10 or 15% growth in police or public safety staffing, would we be okay with what's proposed here? With a small growth in police, yes, but with a major growth, maybe 20% or more, probably not. We would probably even need more space. Okay. And we're just trying to utilize the best uh, area that we have that's been vacant for a few years and just use as junk storage anyway. Yeah. You know. Chief, you, you said the rough estimate you heard for, I'm obviously not holding you to this, on the HVAC big upgrades was like 1.3 million or so? Yeah, Fred had reminded me that we had, we did a study at one point and that's what the cost was. 
It's like two thirds the cost of the community center <laughs> just for the HVAC. Yeah. I'm just for compare. I'm just thinking about it out loud. That's all. Just making sure I heard that right. Any other supervisor comments? Is there any public comment regarding this project? Anybody on the line? No one on the line. No one in the room. Okay. Hearing none, call to question. All those in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. The next item would be uh, the, an update on the status of the parks and recreation infrastructure improvements. Uh, the first item is the Skylar tennis courts. Uh, we were on site. Uh, well, we let's take a step back. We uh, we township staff, uh, Monica, Jim Majewski, myself met with uh, Keystone Constructors Inc. Uh, they were the contractor who uh, resurfaced the community park tennis courts. Uh, we were pleased with their work. We understood that they uh, have a um, line item on CoStars that, uh, that they're available to complete uh, the renovations for Schuyler Tennis Courts, um, that scope of work. So we've met with them to um, basically get their take on, on the proposed uh, improvements there. Uh, and those proposed improvements would be a, a complete reconstruction of the Schuyler Tennis Courts, um, removal of the asphalt, removal uh, uh, and replacement of the nets, the posts, the fencing, uh, install new uh, asphalt surface and then a painted surface over top of that. Um, we are taking core samples of the existing uh, asphalt uh, thickness to determine how much uh, the quantity of asphalt that they need to remove. Um, there's uh, and also uh, determine the makeup of the stone base that's underneath the asphalt to determine what kind of uh, whether an underdrain system is is needed. Uh, we believe that one is, um, but we want to confirm those results. And we also have uh, our surveyors scheduled to uh, survey those tennis courts and the parking lot uh, this week. Um, once we get that information. Uh, we can develop a grading plan and go back to Keystone Constructors Inc. to get a price through CoStars for that work. So, Andy, real quick, Dan, before you, you yeah, pop in, um, these tennis courts were original to when Yardley Hunt was built? I believe so. Okay. No. And I guess going through the core sample and going through the what's existing there, you're, you're going to try to rebuild something that's going to be, I mean, that's, that's what, 40 years they've been there. Yes. Okay. So uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't know that we're going to rebuild exactly what is there. It's just a matter of, uh, we believe that the, we believe that there's no minor fix to these courts. The courts are in such poor condition that uh, a, a, a major replacement is, is warranted at this point. Yeah, and I guess my point is that if you know if you if you say to me the effective age of tennis courts is forty years and and we're at the end of that effective life cycle, I think that you know that's that's more than we can ask for. I think from a from a township standpoint, I think that's that's a fair amount of time. So yeah. that, that was the only thing I wanted to add. Dan, did you want to add something? Yeah, I was just wanted to get clarification on our process here. Um, so when when we there was the vote to you know a lot some money towards this towards the project at some point and the thought that we might get some matching grants and whatnot but it sounds like we're currently spending money on engineering sampling core samples um survey etc is that right so that's it's just moving forward immediately and then it sounds like um these keystone constructors um i'm not sure how we we're, obviously, they've done some work for the township in the past, but are we planning to, after we do all of that, the engineering surveying, et cetera, to just get a price from Keystone and say, go for it? Or are they just give and, and not RFP it and bid it out? Or is Keystone doing this as a courtesy so we can get a construction estimate from a, from a constructor? That's what I'm unclear about. So we would have the opportunity after we get a, a quote from Keystone, 
uh, we would have the opportunity to reject that, to negotiate with them to get a better price uh, where we would compare it to uh, similar projects in other municipalities that we're familiar with um, or reject it and, and put it out for bid. And at that point, um, we would still need bid documents. We would still need the survey, the, the core samples and all of the design that's being done at this point. Um, so, but there's no RF, so there's, there's been some decision made to not RFP it yet again. Is that what no, I'm hearing? There, no, there has not been a decision made to to, R, to not RFP it. In fact, it, it, you mentioned co-stars. I thought that right. that's part of the process, but you mentioned it. So that's actually, uh, we want to make sure we don't avoid the, the bid requirements if it's above 21,500, wherever the, the threshold is now. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're, so sure. why are we work? Why are we working so cl closely like with phone. Keystone before we even go through that process? It sounds like it's a foregone conclusion that Keystone is going to get this work, and that's why they're helping us out. Um, I yeah, that, that that's not my understanding of, of this process. I, I I fully intend to once uh, we get pricing to bring that to the board, and and then the board can uh have the the vote on whether or not to accept it to or reject it dan i just want to provide some clarity this is just a discussion tonight it's not a vote or a decision uh, we just wanted to bring up that keystone is a co-stars already pre-bid on the consortium we've used the consortium before for police projects um, it, it's already been vetted and approved, and they actually just sent us our co-stars paperwork or documentation, which we'd be glad to send to the board, was just not timely for this meeting. Uh, we plan to bring this project and the pricing and everything back to the board for approval. Right now, it's just discussion of this option because Skylar Tennis Court, court is more of an urgent matter. It's now closed at this time. The summer camp is operating on Memorial Park courts and community courts temporarily until we can have it repaired. So just wanna bring that. That's, that was proved separately than the other projects that we discussed with regard to funding. Um, I just right. want to make sure that that was clear and it's no, clear it's it's working. very clear what's what's happening here. We're, we're spending money on this to get the engineering and the core samples done and the survey. That's that's a spend. And then we're going to keep we're, it sounds like we're giving Keystone right of we're, we're going to get a price from Keystone first. And then if we like it, we'll go with them. And if we don't, we'll go with someone else. What I'm saying is, like everything else I've been saying this year is we don't give only Keystone the right to give us a price. We RFP it as we would any other project and make and get multiple bids from multiple contractors to construct this process to me is broken. That, you know, that's what doing, COSTARS I'm, is. COSTARS pre-bids for you. That, that is, it's already a bidded project. It's already been bid, the best bidder won the bid and we can then go to COSTARS. That's why we're a part of COSTARS to be able to get projects done. But if for some reason you don't like COSTARS, mm -hmm. there's other, contractors on co-stars that would also be available to do the project and would bid on that project also. So it's not just a one and done contractor, which when you talk about co-stars, you, you have a tendency to think that when you go to co-stars, it's one person, one person's going to do the work or provide the service or sell you the car, but it's not. There's a various number of co-star contractors, co-star dealers, and if you're not satisfied with one, you could always go to another co-stars dealer. Right. Or Can we go to multiple at one time at the beginning? Um, I don't believe it works that way. I believe they shoot it out and you do the lowest bid. And if you're comfortable with that and you believe the work is, is comparable, then you can go with that. If not, you could send it back to co-stars. And then of course, we, all, we always have the, the option of you know, uh, rejecting the co-stars price and putting it out for bid after that as well. But then that that takes money from the engineer to bid it and time to bid it and go yeah. through the state bid process. So, and how's this one being funded? What's the funding mechanism for this project? The sewer proceeds or budget? It was part of the sewer proceed discussion. I mean, if you want to fund it in a different way, you can, but it was part of the, it was allocated as part of the sewer proceed discussion. Yeah, I believe it was earmarked from that, Dan. Um, but again, I don't think that that holds us to that. Are we? Are there grants available then to supplement anything that we might spend on these? 
because that was a big part of the discussion for earmarking was that matching well, grants and whatnot would be included, but it seems not necessarily for Skylar. Skylar is more of an urgent matter that needs to be repaired. Um, yes, for the other projects, we would be looking at grants for those projects. They, they were separate in the presentation. As you might remember, Skylar Court, Court was called out separately than the other projects. Those projects are earmarked. We're looking for grant funding and other opportunities there, but Skylar needs to be repaired. Well, as, as you remember, I, I voted against uh, using sewer funds for projects that we could should be funding through the budget. Um, so yeah, I, it's there are other ways to do it. Um, and I see a couple more on our list tonight that have other contractors already mentioned and moving forward with things. So I'm not, it sounds like everything is urgent right now. So I'm a little frustrated with our, with our process here to spend, spend our sewer money so quickly. Yeah, I don't know from a I don't know from a budgeting standpoint if it's necessarily going to be sewer money, Dan. I'm not sure if it can be rescue fund money. Um, I think it's a it could be a combination of both. I'm not sure if it's one or the other. Uh, I don't know if any of the other supervisors have That's, insight on on where it's coming from. But the the um, as far as the pot of money is concerned, the relief money is now unrestricted. So can just throw the relief money into the pot. And then we have the bond fund, $3.7 million. But, you know, that I think, I think where the money comes from is immaterial to the actual process and the co-stars process is something we've used now for years. And, um, you know, unless the solicitor has another opinion, I think, the process we're using is just fine. Well, I mean, the point is there's no award tonight. I think that's the most. Right. We're not, we're not, we're just having this. I mean, and, and if indeed, when it comes to the point and we've clarified that if an award is, has to be made, it has to go through the bid process, whether it's a co-stars approval, which is, is a, is a is one way to get there or a separate bid process here. So that, you know, we, we cannot avoid that under any circumstance once, once the project is identified as something other than maintenance, which it is. And secondly, that it exceeds a certain threshold, which apparently it, it, it does, we anticipate that it will, so. At this point, at this point, you don't see. There's, there's no action tonight that violates that. Now, okay. I think you know, if, from a budgetary perspective, if you want to decide and clarify where it comes from at some point, that may be prudent. That's not a bid issue, but that's something that I think somewhere down the road before the the the, the project is bid you, you want to clarify that the board already approved at a, at a previous meeting to just earmark x number of dollars yeah, and it, yeah how, how you decide as a board earmark market is, is i think yeah obviously yeah, prerogative, I, yeah. but it has to be something that qualifies yeah. either as exactly. capital arp or if it's from the sewer fund it's been designated that way then just so some clarity on that so Monica, I just want to say that I was a little bit skeptical when uh, you brought up Skylar a few weeks slash months ago. So, you know, Mike and I went out there. <laughs> I was startled that you could actually do like a little geographic view from the side of the courts because there's so much erosion um, and you can you can see from the side or if you try to walk along it. Um, you know, it, it's it's in really bad shape. So I thank you for closing them. I'm, I'm sad that they're closed, but I see why they need to be closed. And I thank you for trying to get the information, you too, Andy, so that we can understand what our options to move forward. Any other supervisor comments? Yes, John. Yes, yeah, so this is a recurring theme of process concerns. And it's frustrating because it's unfair to staff and to our professionals. This is one of the circumstances where a lot of questions could be answered if you said, these are the projects that I view as important. These are the ones I want us to review in the coming weeks. This is the timeline that I would think that these are to be addressed. This is a relative budget amount. This is what I'm thinking. And that would make things very easy for us to say, yes, no, maybe, or dig into the functions of the project, much as the discussion uh, again, uh, the one we had just a moment ago about space utilization on the second floor of this building. Again, if I had had that a while ago, I would have had time to think about it, mull it over, have some ideas. If I knew timeline and I could prioritize that against other things, I would have a better sense and I could provide more value. 
But my sense is that you're not interested in a process that is straightforward and says, hey, I want this by this timeline spent this way, and this is why. It's ad hoc, and we're getting stuff, I don't know, two in the afternoon for uh, 7.30 decisions. And that's what's engendering some of the frustration I sense from fellow supervisors around that. And, and that's where, again, we don't have a township manager, why an interim would be very helpful in this case, because staff shouldn't be wading into these and worrying about, well, am I gonna get quizzed on the nth detail on this sort of budgetary matter? That's not their job or role. Um, and I think it's unfair to them. And that's why I think, I honestly think you need to really batten down, figure out what is it you wanna cover when and provide more detail and be more upfront with your fellow supervisors about this. Because it's frustrating and it leads to, it, it, again, maybe you're not concerned, my opinion on these topics, and that might be fine too. And you can just tell me to, as you suggested previously to kind of pound off and that's fine, but uh, I got elected just like you, so. Yeah, I, I feel a recurring theme that, that you're not pleased with the agenda and the way that it's being formatted or laid out before you. I'll remind you that the agenda was sent out last Friday, right? I haven't talked to you since last Friday. I haven't probably talked to you in about two months. So if there's anything on an agenda item, and this goes for all the supervisors, if there's anything on the agenda item that you have a question about, you have my phone number, I'm readily available. You can ask anybody that's sitting at that dais right now, I would answer a phone call within one hour. So to now come to a meeting with these you know, accusations of, hey, I have no idea what's going on without communicating with me prior to it, kind of seems disingenuous, but I feel like it's the same theme, whether I'm the chair or Suzanne's the chair or Fred's the chair, it's the same theme. You feel like you're not being told what's going on you don't reach out to any of the chairs while they're while they're you know available to you, but that's completely James. Absurd. I was actually the last person to call you. I, I called you uh, a couple of months ago, and uh, I did reach out to you. I have reached out to you multiple times. The challenge I have is every time I have a discussion with you, where we come to perhaps some accommodation on something, you blow me off. So I, don't, at I, point, I, I completely I mean, disagree with that, John. I, I have communications with every supervisor that's sitting right there except for you. So, and you can, you can ask all of them. I have open communications with every single one of them except for you. So I feel like that's a John problem, not a me problem, so. Oh, so you're not supposed to proofread what you're supposed to, it's the Friday before the 4th of July weekend. Yeah. And it's my job to proofread, you give me something at five o'clock and find out, hey, you didn't put that stuff in? I know, it, it was the prior meeting, it was something else and, that, and there was no holiday around that. Do you want me to call you James? Because I will. I, I would appreciate it if you would, yeah, definitely. Yeah, but it doesn't change your behavior. Okay, thanks for the uh, thanks for the information and for your constructive criticism. As always, John, it's highly, highly regarded by everybody. Trust me. Um, any other supervisor comments? Is there any public comment? Hey, James. Sure, Dan. Hi. Without wading into that specifically. As we get into some, you know, we're going to start getting into more and more of these individual smaller projects and other spends on different things. Um, you know, one of the items that I've personally have been asking for, I'll say it that way, is sort of a, a plan, a spend plan around, you know, to Fred's comment earlier about whether it's bond money or the uh, store money or the uh, federal monies, whatever it is, if I think one thing that would be very helpful uh, is if we could put our heads together in terms of a overall spend plan um, with those without any animosity behind it, but gen genuinely um, sit down and look at what the project list is or could be it, it, probably ahead of one of our special meetings that I think we have probably coming up in August or something like that. Um, just come come up with a, a a spend plan so that we know what buckets we have, um, what projects we have, and you know there's going to be disagreement, but at least it'll be a list of stuff, and we can we'll we'll be thinking about it together, in terms of um, how we allot a lot money, you know, and and what we do. I mean, I think we've been trying to do that openly 
on how we protect the money. I think we've been having good conversations around that. Um, but the other side of that coin is how we spend it. So I, it would be if we could make, I, I think without having a township manager, it, it doesn't help. It puts a lot of the onus on, really it does put a lot of the onus on you as the chair because you end up having to put it on the, uh, on the agenda and chase things down that otherwise you might not have to. Um, just because of the nature of where we're sitting right now in, in time. Um, but it might be helpful. I don't know if we get if, to have some type of session where we just sort of just make a, that sort of plan that we've, we've been talking about. Yeah. And I, I think to that, Dan, I think uh, it's almost like the chicken or the egg, right. And until we actually come to terms of what it is that we want to put aside as part of that trust, then you try to figure out how much is, Right, how much is going to be left, and and how we want to allocate the rest of that, or or do we put all of it into the trust, or do we put you know eighty percent of it, or, or whatever that number is? But no, that's 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 a great point. I mean, I have no problem figuring out exactly you know where that bucket of money is going to be coming for these yeah. projects, and 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 coming up with that. I have no problem with that. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know how you do it, yeah. like put put it on the big board sort of thing, and then as we start to see what the buckets sure. are, we start to take it off the big board. Yep. I don't know. James, the uh, tennis court repairs are the uh, sewer fund money. Okay. Renovations for the second floor are American Relief Fund money. Okay. Thanks, Chief. Any other uh, supervisor comments regarding this agenda item? All right, Andy, I will move you on to 9B2. Kale. Actually, um, Mr. Chair, you have a motion to approve the advertisement. So you need to have a vote on that. Oh, I, I apologize. Thank That's you. That's all right. Let's. We have Make a sure motion we, on the floor. It's not uh, the intention not, tonight. It was no. just discussion. Well, to, no, yeah, just to prove the advertisement is what you talk. Yes, yeah. with the, the that motion. one we already no, did. Not for Skylar tennis courts. No, no. Oh, I'm sorry. He's on Mr. 9A, and we already voted on that. You're right. I'm sorry. You're right. I'm so sorry. now we're on My 9B. Mistake. Correct. This is discussion only. 9B2. Before we get started on anything further in the engineer's report, I just want to make it clear that tonight is all discussion. We wanted to start having the discussion. Under B, correct. Uh, it is not voting. We're not making serious decisions tonight. We just wanted to give you the opportunity to have the discussion before we move forward. So as we move into the rest of the conversation, I just want to make that clear so that we, you know, we're, we're not... However, Monica, this was all discussed at June 9th, was that not? It was also discussed on June 9th. Yep. Yes. Okay. And, and what, it has what, been discussed in the past. Yeah. And what was discussed on June 9th? The funding. actual cost, where the funding came from? Uh, an estimate was call, uh, discussed. The problems that we've been having at Schuyler Tennis Court were discussed and funding for the projects. And where general. the funding is coming from. And where the funding is coming from, yes. So it was earmarked out of the sewer proceeds? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. So we can move on to, and I don't know if Andy or if, or if Monica wants to take this next one, Kaola Lights. I'll start out with Kaola Lights. Thank um, you. At the, yeah, at the last Park Ford meeting, uh, residents did come with some concerns about the lights at Kaola. Um, I did want to include the neighbors, and I did promise to the neighbors that I would include them in the discussion. So we, this is not a requirement, but above and beyond, we plan to reach out to the neighbors within a 300, 300 foot radius, which is not the requirement for a project like this. And um, we are going to invite them to the site and we're going to go over, you know, what the project will be. We plan to do that on the 26th of this month um, with lots of advertisements So more information to follow, but just wanna let you know if any of the neighbors are watching, they saw it on the agenda and you're concerned, we do plan to include you in any type of discussion of what things would look like, what your concerns are and anything like that. Um, so you could see exactly where it is and how it might impact your house. So we do plan on doing that. Um, so before Andy even started with the discussion tonight, I did want to make sure that we do plan on including the neighbors in the discussion. Right. Monica, just a quick question. You said something about neighbors within 300 feet. 300 feet of the site, yes. Are there any residential homes within 300 feet of that site? Yes. Yes. And how many? Sartre Valley Road. How many neighbors would that impact, roughly? Uh, probably less than 10, I would say. Uh, it, it's the neighbors across. Uh, 35 or 40. Okay. Yeah. Then is what Jim said. Correct. Yeah. Houses all there. Count, Countess and Liberty, Jim. There were those be. Yeah. Okay. And, and you've reached out to all 35 or 40. Does it impact it? 
residents? Not yet. No, we plan to, okay. that's why we need some time to be able. So sure. we plan in the next week, go out um, okay. and provide information to all of those neighbors. And we will have a meeting that we plan it on the 26th. I guess what you were saying is that you've heard from some of those neighbors already during the parks and recs meeting, correct? I did. Yes. Okay. Sure. Yeah, we did. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 All yes. right. Any, any other supervisor questions for Monica regarding the KO yeah. floods? Yeah. Sure. Go ahead, Dan. Oh, thank you. Uh, John had his hand up too. I don't want to cut him off. Sorry. Um, Monica, in terms of the lights, have we had, um, what was I going to say here? In Lights, you know, impact usage, obviously. That's why the Cubs, Cubbies took, ended up putting them up so they get night games, right, Dave? Um, so the, uh, have we had any sort of plan or, that, I use that word loosely, um, and any idea what the usage difference will be once lights are once lights are installed, like how many more practices or games they might get, and what time they might go to, and all that. Um, well, with all of our other fields that are lit, we cut off around nine nine thirty, and the lights go off automatically at ten. We look at having something a little better than that. Um, that site, the reason that was selected by PIA. Um, as that's the largest group of signups. That's the largest group generally always that sign up 10 to 12 year old um, and they have trouble getting time in. So we would be able to accommodate the children who are signed up better with practice schedule. Um, now. So, so they, they can practice till like 9, 930, so they 10 can o'clock practice, at night? Well, they'd be out of there by 939. Yeah. Okay. I'm just wondering if, if that age group actually has, would actually stay out that late. I, I've my, heard from my folks son at PA practices that, would... that late and he's that age. Yeah. I gotcha. <laughs> yeah. So um, that that's kind of common. M Monica, even even if it not if it's not within that age group, if it's different age groups, does, would they still be able to utilize the field for you know certain other drills and practices? I'm not sure what you're asking, really. I mean, I I guess, but right now it's heavily used by that age group. So I, what, I don't is know. it. Here's another way to ask it, James, because I, I played Little League, so I don't know my, this is Babe Ruth or Cal Ripken, yeah. but like 10 to 12 is majors, right? 13, 14 is seniors. So the field sizes are different, right? Oh. I forget the, the distance to the six, base. Six, 60 feet base, base pass up to 12 years. And then starting at 13, they move to 75 feet and then sometimes yeah. 90 feet right away then too. I knew you'd know that Dave. So I, that's, I, that's another way to ask it. Cause the, the different age groups, if they can jump different fields, obviously if they're the older kids wouldn't always be used, wouldn't want to use the smaller fields just because um, maybe the outfield for, for drills, as you were saying, James, but I th is that what you're going for? Yeah. I was just asking if other yeah. age groups even, even can use other aspects of the field uh, yeah. just for drills, you know, whether it's ground ball drills or, you know, uh, fly ball drills and that sort of thing, but it doesn't yeah. sound like there's a need for, for those other age groups. It's really for that particular age group that, that plays on that field. I and mean, that didn't... they could I, technically if there's availability, but I have a feeling that during the season, it's going to be heavily utilized that it, it, we wouldn't, they wouldn't have extra availability. Okay. Thank you. Any well, other, I'm sorry, go ahead, Dan. Well, the other thing is that that's practices. Are they looking to have, um, now with the lights, would they be looking to have more tournaments or anything like that? That would, that, I mean, that's what I think the neighbors would probably be most concerned about, right? Is if there would, if having the lights would lead to more tournaments and i.e. more traffic and loudness for later on more extended periods. So is that something they're contemplating? That's not something we discussed. Uh, it was okay. more accommodating their practices in current games. Um, yeah. I, I, that is something I can go back to PAA and confirm. Sure. I think that's what the neighbors would, for other, other than extended light into their homes, I think that's something that they would be concerned about. John, did you want to add something? Yeah. Have we done balloon tests yet for the proposed lights, Andy? Uh, it seems to me that that would be particularly helpful before meeting with the residents because the changes in the technology around lighting has really tightened up light pollution and it may knock out some of the residents concerns once they see a balloon test of this it's just a suggestion but um it's one i think that might bias uh some engagement with folks in a constructive way uh, we have not completed a balloon test at this point um, we've looked into the feasibility of it um, 
the the company that completed the balloon test for us at Snipes uh, five years ago. Um, we reached out to them. They indicated that um, they could probably have it done within the next month. Um, they they couldn't give us a, a, a more tighter time frame because they indicate that there is a uh, short supply of helium <laughs> and that they are restricted uh, to the amount that they're allowed to use uh, simply because they're not a, a medical uh, facility and they get first dibs on the, the helium that's available. So, um, yeah. It's been, it's been that way for a while. Right. Yeah. All right. Any other supervisor comments? Uh, the only thing that I'll say is what, what we're proceeding with is uh, we're, we're um, scheduled to conduct uh, um, soil bearing capacity uh, borings so that we can ensure that the, the soil out there can um, handle the foundations for the light, light tower. So that's what we're proceeding with. How many are you doing one at each location for proposed, proposed light pole? Uh, yes. Uh, we believe there's going to be uh, five light poles, and and so uh, we'll have testing at, at each proposed location. Any other supervisor comments? Any public comment? Anybody on the line? Nope. All right. Uh, Two more items, three veterans square ADA accessibility. Yeah, so in meeting with uh, township staff, we've uh, reviewed uh, the layout of uh, veterans square uh, park and um, reviewed the, the desires for that have been previously brought to the township uh, for ADA accessibility to both the drinking fountain, uh, the memorial or the monument at the uh, at the park and also the, the playground. Uh, and so we're working to um, get survey of the existing um, park and then also develop a concept uh, plan that um, we can proceed with that fits within the uh, proposed budget, I believe. Uh, that's $100,000 or no, the, the ADA upgrades would be $60,000 per the ADA transition plan that was um, previously discussed. Any questions regarding the ADA plan? Yeah, just one. Sure. Andy, do we do we need to make any improvements to the existing parking lot? I know it's a mix of gravel and kind of beat up pavement. Yeah, I think that that's probably the the main focus of the the ADA upgrades is to provide ADA parking spaces uh, and an ADA compliant parking space would include uh, a, a level flat area for parking and. Uh, getting in and out of vehicles. So would it be just those parking spaces where we'd want to allow like van access or whatever would be, you know, once they get out of that, the envelope of, let's say that parking space with the, the offset from there, that it goes back to being gravel. Is that what you envision? Uh, we're going to try and stretch that dollar as, as much as we can. So um, the, the, the focus will be providing an ADA compliant path to the, the playground, the monument and the drinking fountain and the spaces. And then if there's um, available dollars to, to extend that beyond the, the, those immediate parking spaces, then we would certainly be uh, open to doing that. Understood, thanks. Any other comments regarding the ADA at Veterans Square? And then finally, Andy, the uh, ADA accessibility at Memorial Park. Yes, yeah, so this would be for the, uh, the existing playground at Memorial Park. Uh, this would be ADA improvements, uh, including a new um, rubberized surface uh, that replaces the existing surface and, and also uh, including uh, shade structures. Uh, so we are working um, with, uh, developing the, the design on that. We, have, we do not have a concept plan at this point, um, but the existing infrastructure is already there. So it's a mere replacement of that stuff. And, and then also the inclusion of a shade structure. So um, yeah, the, the, the concept plan is 
basically the existing conditions plan at this point. Any questions for Andy regarding Memorial Park ADA? Any public comment on any of those two prior items, Veteran Square or Memorial Park? Anybody on the phone that wants, has any questions? Nobody on the line. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andy. Thank you, That's, Monica. Thank you. That's all I have for engineer's report. Okay. Uh, agenda item number 10, which is the project updates. Um, does anybody have any questions regarding any of those? James, I have a couple quick ones. Yeah, shoot. Um, Andy, I'll go, I'll go back to you. Um, the Memorial Park, the area, um, what compass direction is that? I guess east, the furthest east section of the park, the wide open section that's mowed basically from the from the road all the way back to the tree line. It's parallel to the new tennis courts. Um, yeah, yeah, so basically east of the new tennis courts. The, yes, uh, yeah, there's a tree line in between the tennis courts in this area. That's, I'm trying to envision that, sorry. Um, I was there over the weekend, um, and one uh, one of the things I noticed was the area that kind of lines up with the new tennis courts in that section. It looks like, a, I don't know if it was part of the tennis court project or something else, but one of the contractors sort of, you know this term, lost some fill or lost some material in uh, mostly gravel, from compacted gravel from what it looks like in that field. Um, so it's pretty, I, I actually just went out for a run and thought I'd run up there cause it was all mowed and I hadn't been up there in a long time. And it, most of it was compacted. It was probably a, a quarter to a third, the, the entire stretch of that piece, that particular piece of, uh, the park looked to be compacted fill with gravel in it. Um, and with the, the weather, the way it's been, it was pretty easy to tell, um, even on top of that, because of the, uh, the relative dryness of the grass there too it was that's sort of your big brown spot on there um so i was curious as to whether or not um it's not usually something we would allow a contractor to do is to put their gravel cover their gravel and then put seed on top of it in, a, in an open park um so i'm wondering if that's something that we've we've noticed them doing or if that's something that we need to go back to a contractor about to make sure that they haven't uh with that type of material in our park? So uh, we are scheduled to uh, walk the, the site with the uh, DCNR uh, to close out the, the grant uh, for that project on Monday. Uh, and that's certainly something that I will look into. Uh, and if we need to go back to the contractor, then we're still withholding money from the contract uh, in order to um, in order to complete any rest, uh, restoration work that needs to be done if if that's the case. Okay, that was, um, and you'll just, you'll notice it just a different color of the grass. That's really where the grass color changes. Um, I don't know if this is part of that project or not, but I was curious as to why we're mowing such a large, large area of land just as mowed grass. There's no trees in the middle. There's no, there's, I don't, I don't know that we, have any plans to use it for anything other than just a big open space? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, <coughs> golly, I don't know what, I, sorry, frog in my throat here. Um, so I'm curious, that's, is, that's not part of any future project plan. It's just something that we're mowing right now. Uh, the only to your thing, knowledge? Yeah. yeah, to my knowledge, that's not uh, part of any future project plan. The only thing that I had heard was that, um, perhaps additional trees were, would be planted over there to provide additional uh, screening or buffering for the, the properties from uh, the park activities. Okay, yeah, we, we may wanna look at how we manage that particular section. Um, and then any update, and you might have, the, I may have missed it in your engineer's report, any updates on the, the one I asked you about before about the DEP or the Conservation District Review of the Woodside Bike Path? Yes, uh, actually, uh, I'm pleased to report that there is an update on that. Um, the, we did receive comments today. Uh, they were mostly uh, administrative in nature um, from the conservation district. And so 
Um, that's some, uh, they seem like uh, relatively easy comments to address. And so uh, we believe we can turn that around relatively quickly and have a, a revised submission you know, by the end of the week. What do you think that means for our overall project schedule? For the overall, I'm sorry, the, did you say the overall project timeline or the overall project scope? I said schedule, so probably let's say both. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I, so they, they still have a, a technical review to complete, um, but I think that uh, the overall project timeline is, is still on course to be um, completed, uh, you know, bid within August, uh, award in September and um, construct in, in the fall or in, uh, prior to the end of the year. Okay. And then the last one, it looks like we're starting work on uh, the multi-use trail soon. Uh, Jim Majewski is here to provide an update on that. There we go. Good evening. I just want to give you an update. We did meet with the contractor today, along with uh, PennDOT and other representatives, and we walked the entire trail to look at all of the logistics of all the work that is uh, going to be done, including uh, cutting down of trees. And uh, the contractor did relay that they're currently on target to start work out there on July 18th. So they'll first be putting in all the erosion and sedimentation control measures and then doing the tree clearing. Uh, we had some questions on whether we should save some trees or either cut down some more, trim or whatever. And we actually determined that for one section that will actually, the day of it, be out there and take out the trees that we know need to come out and then look at the other ones on an individual basis once those ones are out of the way to see if the others that were scheduled to be taken off, uh, taken down, should be removed or just trimmed, or are there additional ones that maybe we should take down while we're out there? We actually have a very good price for the tree removal, so uh, that's something that we'll be doing in the next two weeks. Jim, are any of those calorie repairs? No, I don't believe so. I was looking at some of the trees, um, and there were a few non-natives that were going to be gone, so... I'm sure that'll make you happy. <laughs> it does. Thank you. I, I was going to ask. Um, so first, this is great news that we're starting to get some traction on it. One of the things that um, just as sort of a transition issue, when do we think we'd be able to file for the reimbursement uh, for its DCNR for this one, right? Uh, it's DVRPC. DVRPC, sorry. Yeah. Um, when do we think we'd be filing for that reimbursement? Uh, would it be prior to the end of the year, or do we have a... I'm not really sure. It, basically, as they go along, we can get reimbursement is what I understand. Okay. And so we have to... Uh, we were discussing that today, and we we're just working through... How do we work through ECMS, which is the PennDOT system, where they handle all the paperwork, all the tracking, all the payments, and the authorizations... And, and we need to get all set up in that to make sure we're all on board. And you're the, would you be the one requesting that at each step then, or do you require the township, uh, the person who holds the title township manager? I think Kurt was the one designated, but we would have another person uh, step in to handle most of that stuff. There might be a few things that he technically would still have to do unless we changed that name over to someone else. Okay. And I just the reason why I'm particular about that is you don't want to have a situation where, you know, that we miss that for this year and we have negative balances for next year uh, in this line item. And that would cause people, you know, uh, to have some concerns. That's why I want to make sure we're, we've got that one on transition. So that we're getting the money as we to do it. So. And the contractor does not project this to be a long, long-term project. Uh, most of the work in the trail, they think could be done fairly quickly the lead time will be on the traffic signal poles. I think it's like a six month lead time on some of those. So, uh, yeah, that's just what it is. Um, but the actual build part of the path, that's not that long then. Yeah, they anticipate going through it fairly quickly. So a couple of weeks then? 
for that or? Uh, maybe a month or two. I know they do have uh, work on the ADA accessible ramps that need to be done. And PennDOT has a review process. It's a design build process. So they actually uh, survey it real, like down to the, you know, every couple of feet, submit that to PennDOT for review. It's a 28 day review period by PennDOT uh, before they approve it. And if they reject it, then it's another 28 days for the next cycle. So depending on how many cycles of review they go through, um, that could be a little bit of a holdup, although they're, they have a plan for that to do the bulk of the trail work and then come in and finish off the other pieces of the trails and the ADA accessible ramps. And then finally uh, do all the traffic signals and poles and that type of work whenever the poles do arrive. So when would the, that initial work then would be actually laying out the trail before the poles are done? Would it would be still closed then or would it be available for people? Uh, well, I think it generally would be kind of available. I okay. Mean, um, once they get it backfilled and in a condition that it's safe for the public to yeah. utilize. It won't be fully functional though until uh, later whenever the polls yeah. arrive. Well, that's excellent news. That's good. Awesome, thanks. Any other supervisor comments regarding the project updates? Any public comment or questions regarding the, the uh, project updates? Anybody on the line? Nobody on the line. Thank you. Moving on to number 11 solicitor's report, Mr. Trulove. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first, an executive session started at 6.30 tonight. It uh, ended just before this meeting started. All board members were present along with Chief Caluzzi and myself. Litigation items, real estate items, contract items, personnel items, security items, and informational items were discussed at the executive session. I have three items under my report specifically before we get to the zoning hearing board matters. First, as a consideration to advertise the 5G ordinance, uh, and if, if the public doesn't recall, we've had some discussions about this periodically in the last uh, several months. Uh, I know uh, board members have, have looked at this a few times. Uh, the impetus for this is the fact that back in August of last year, almost a year ago, the state legislature passed uh, Act 50, which was a prescriptive process by which municipalities could regulate any 5G applications that qualify under that uh, that reg, uh, uh, regime. And frankly, it's it's uh, it's it's a fast track system, that, and, and, and to be honest, favors the um, the uh, applicants uh, generally. Uh, the problem is, if we don't have something on the books, uh, we won't be able to regulate it at all. This is just asking uh, the board to approve advertising the 5G ordinance. There has been some questions as to whether we can strengthen anyway, and our research indicates that it is very unlikely that that would happen based upon the way that Act 50 is uh, was uh, enacted and, and actually the purpose for Act 50. I will say that one of the things that is in uh, the proposed ordinance to be advertised is that one of the subsections 2E says, nothing in this chapter shall preclude the township from applying its generally applicable health, safety, and welfare regulations when acting on an application for a permit uh, for as a, a, a SWF in the public right away. So arguably there's some catch-all phrase here. I will say honestly that there's been no uh, testing of these ordinances uh, anywhere in the Commonwealth yet. However, uh, like I said, this is uh, from state law. So we're recommending that we advertise this now because at least it gives us something on the books if, if you do decide to enact it after it's properly advertised and then uh, if uh, the law changes and we can strengthen it or amend it or supersede it, we will do that. So that's that's our recommendation tonight, at least to prove for advertisement tonight. Make a motion to uh, advertise. Well, 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 after we make the motion, we'll... Okay. That's okay. No, you're no. fine. Thank you. Fine. Um, make a motion to advertise the uh, 5G um, ordinance for the township. Uh, uh, to ju to uh, sync with the uh, with state regulation Act 50. Second. Motion made by Supervisor Weiss, seconded by Supervisor Blundy. Any supervisor discussion? Yes, Dan. Uh, Mr. Mr. Trulove, I, you know some of the discussion we've had just in, in the past was our relative flexibility in terms of or the relative flexibility of what we can do with the ordinance to make it stronger, strengthen. It whatever we may do that might be to the benefit of lower makefield. Um, I think your response was there's, there's not much of any wiggle room here. Can you that's, just that's elaborate correct. on that a little bit? It's not an answer I like to give, but 
Uh, again, if you, and I'm sure you've looked at this, but if you look at Act 50 itself, uh, the way it's structured and generally state law, when they, they provide regulations to local municipalities, uh, that's usually uh, the most a municipality can, can do as opposed to building on it. That's just the way Pennsylvania law is. But this one in particular was drafted and designed that way. Again, I wanted to point out that one catch-all phrase that depending on the circumstances, maybe something we, we would have to rely on under the right circumstances. You know, the hope is perhaps we could take advantage of it as a township with our own uh, uh, poles and things like that that might be used to benefit the township regulated on our own property. But we're not there yet. The problem is we don't want to be in a position where we have nothing on the books and then uh, an applicant comes in and, and we have no way to regulate it or even review it. So that, that's why we recommend this now. It's not, it's not the best of options, but right now it's the only option. That's the way our, our interpretation is. So. Um, Thank you for that. Sure. Any other supervisor questions? There's a gentleman here in the audience who wanted to uh, uh, ask some questions and make some comments. So I didn't want to. Thank you, Dave. If you could step up to the microphone. Yeah. Your address Just state, state your name and address for the record, then we'll go from there. Doug Marshall, um, 1009 North Elbow Lane, Lower Makefield Township. And I think you've answered most of the question. And I guess I have a very quick follow up, which is um, I have heard of, and although you know I'm not a scientist, potential health issues or repercussions regarding 5G, is that something which we can take into consideration here as a township or does Act 50 um, say, no, I mean, this is a blanket kind of a thing you've got to do and no more, there's no consideration given whatsoever to health issues like that. Uh, and, and, well, I think, and this relates back to the uh, cell tower issues years ago with the, um, Oh, uh, I forget the name of the term, but I know that was that was at some point proven not to be an issue. But I'm not saying that's not an issue here. However, as I pointed out, and I'm not going to say that it, it, it's it's a it's a fail safe or an ironclad way to go. But there is that one phrase I just highlighted. It talks about the township applying its generally applicable health, safety, and welfare regulations. So it is it, it is something that I think it, it hopefully recognizes that if uh, technology and science and information advances that we still uh, reserve the right to be able to apply those in circumstances where perhaps applying some of these these regulations may not be enough without resorting to that type of uh, of, uh, of of backup. So that's 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 how I would have, uh, answer your question now. To the best, like I said, we there's been no testing of the these ordinances anywhere at this point. But um, I look at that as a lawyer saying uh, that's something I'll grasp onto if I need to at that time. So. Thank you very much. Of course, and and to your, also to, your, to answer your question, if more information becomes available and and, and uh, other information allows us to to make changes in the ordinance as we go forward, we certainly will will do that. And I'm sure the board will be uh, looking at that closely as well. So, thanks again. Sure, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? None here in the room. Anybody on the line? Nope. Okay, all those in favor to advertise the 5G ordinance? Yeah, Jordan was a solicitor. Yeah. Aye. Aye. So raise Aye. your hand. Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you. Next, um, uh, back in the June 1st meeting, uh, the board, after considerable discussion, approved advertising an ordinance allowing Portnoff law, law associates to collect and link with sewer accounts. Uh, I don't know if I need to go through the history of that in general, but it was properly advertised several weeks ago in time for this, uh, this uh, ordinance to be enacted if the board so uh, feels it's appropriate. There was a presentation by uh, Kevin Virax of Portnoff uh, before the June 1st or at the June 1st meeting discussing uh, the intent of the ordinance and, and their work on it, which actually is, is, uh, is fairly comprehensive. They do this work um, over at least half of the Commonwealth uh, and they set forth in the ordinance a, uh, a, a fee schedule they also emphasize the fact that uh, they tried to work with uh, delinquent accounts in terms of uh, uh, those who want to pay and maybe have a payment plan, something like that. So uh, this is not just a hardcore uh, go after everybody in a way that uh, will demand payment immediately. However, I will say that uh, it's my understanding, if I recall correctly, that the amount of uh, delinquent sewer bills right now that's on the books is something like 1.2 million, I think, was that the number I heard? So. There is an impetus to do that, uh, to at least uh, start collecting these and and, uh, and clean up the books, so to speak, and, and to reduce that amount. So the intent of this is to 
um, have that ordinance on the books and for Portnoff, uh, the law firm to be the one designated to do the work under the terms and conditions in the ordinance and the agreement, which is previously approved. So I hear a motion. So moved. Second. Motion made by Supervisor Weiss, seconded by Supervisor Blundy. Any supervisor discussion? Yes, John. So I will be voting for this ordinance, despite the fact I'm not excited to do that. Um, we're requesting the most aggressive collection that we can, and it's a difficult balance uh, with that. In a past life, I worked on execution sales, collecting sewer rents in another municipality. And uh, obviously my preference would have, if we could have in-housed it. Uh, however, this option allows us to maximize our return. And so while it's, you don't like to be the person to vote for sending out the most aggressive debt collectors out there, uh, sometimes you have to kind of make those decisions. Before I tell everybody I voted yes, I do want to say uh, thanks specifically to Barbara Kirk who helped us collect 230,000. Something like that, yeah. And, and the process was more limited than what's proposed here because that was what's called an in rem, pro in rem process as opposed to also in personam. If you're a first year law student, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but, uh, and Barbara was very, uh, very diligent about that. And of course, her assistant was very helpful in, in processing that. This process expands it and actually makes it more effective. I think before she was there, there was no process. So at least uh, I, yeah. I will agree that. And, and I'm certainly happy that my partner was very effective in doing that. So, so and again, this is my last kind of reminder. I'm reluctantly voting for this. I don't want to have to do that. It's, it's difficult, but you have to make the tough decisions. If, and I'm, if you're out there and you're looking at me on a screen, looking at YouTube, Facebook, please, please, please pay your delinquent super. Trust me when I tell you, that we are sending in the most aggressive, brutal, pipe-hitting debt collectors ever. So please, for your sake, pay your sewer rent. That's all I have. Thank you, Supervisor Weiss. Any other comments, Dan? Quick question for Dave. Um, Dave, <clears throat> I, I've hemmed it hard on this one. I think that's been clear. Um, if, <clears throat> geez, if we find out that we're just not happy with the way Portnoff or anyone else for that matter is treating our, our residents as they, as they um, <clears throat> seek to uh, get these funds. Um, what can we do under this ordinance to change course if necessary? Well, there is an agreement, a separate agreement that, that you can't terminate the contract with them. I forget the specific terms, but there is a notice period. Uh, so that would be the first thing would be to, to I think to terminate the agreement, if, if there's a, a displeasure with that approach. And then after that, if you decide you don't want to go in that, that direction, you would then, I think, vote to rescind the ordinance. Okay. And if, if they, you know, they've been, this particular firm has been sued in the past for best I can describe is I'm used predatory practices is kind of what I think was the term used in one of the lawsuits that, that they, I believe they lost. Um, in, in Philly, I'm not sure what the outcome was on appeal, but um, if if they get sued for something like that, or anyone else does for that matter, that's in that role, are, are we? We're indemnified. Yes. We're indemnified. Yes. Thank yes. you. Yep, yep. That that's yep. part of the agreement is they 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 understand that it's there. Now it doesn't mean it won't be named, but of course they they would then assume the defense and everything else for that. So that's the whole okay. point. Yep. Any other supervisor comments? Any public comment? Anybody on the line? Nope. Call to question all those in favor. Raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed, none. Motion carries 5-0. Last but not least, number C. Yes, uh, the last thing is a uh, leftover from our uh, former uh, public works director, Mr. Hucklebridge, who we all um, uh, are sorry left, but uh, th there was a... Um, the uh, consortium fuel bids came out. Make sure I have it here in front of me. Uh, and the information's uh, fairly um, fairly simple. The I'm sorry, I had that just, just in front of me here just a second ago. So. Right, thanks, okay, yeah. So, um, 
And the, uh, there were bids received uh, for the 2022-2023 delivery prices. All that we can do now based upon what's been uh, provided is to lock into the lowest delivery price for the length of the bid for each item. And the two items are dependent on the amount of uh, deliveries of, of how, how many gallons are delivered. The first uh, would be for Riggins Inc. guaranteed delivery charge of 0.254, uh, well, 25 uh, cents per gallon, ultra low sulfur diesel fuel, the float cost for deliveries of 5,999 gallons or less. And the second is for Petroleum Traders Group guaranteed delivery charge of a little over uh, 0.092 per gallon, regular gasoline, the float cost of delivery cost of 6,000 gallons or, more, or greater. So it's uh, the recommendation to um, approve the fuel contract bid with Riggins as described and Petroleum Traders Corp uh, as described. So moved. Okay. Second. Motion made by Supervisor Blundy, seconded by Supervisor Weiss. Any discussion? Any public comment? Nothing here in the room. None on the line. None on the line. Hearing none, call to question. All those in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed, none. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Dave. Yep. Uh, oh. I guess I'm yeah, on next. Uh, yeah, you're not, you're not done with me yet. Can't, can't, can't get rid of me that easily. Um, under 12, there are three zoning here board matters. And I will say that I think for the third one, there are some several interested people here. I don't want to um, uh, steal their thunder, but I think Mr. Murphy, and Mr. Troilo are here, I think for the applicant, Dr. Semino, I think is here for as, as a, a neighboring resident, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm Doug, Doug Marshall, are you here for that matter as well? Number three, okay, all right. Just to highlight that going forward, but let's take care of items A and B first. Item A, Appeal 22-1971, Emmanuel Butera applies uh, for the property located at 15 Kenmore Road, tax parcel 20-047-008. Uh, he is requesting a variance or variances from the Township Zoning Ordinance 200-23.B in order to construct a shed with a cement slab, which would increase the impervious surface from the existing 16.9% to 17.51%, where 13% is the allowable amount as well as Township Zoning Ordinance 200S51, capital B structures in a floodplain. It has been the practice of this board for several years that when uh, floodplain issues are implicated that we recommend participation. Therefore, we do recommend participation in this matter based upon that application. So in the Mr. Chairman, I move that the Township participate in appeal number 22-1971, Emmanuel Butera, for the property located at 15 Kenmore Road, Yardley, PA 19067, tax parcel 20-0, Four seven dash zero zero eight. Second. Uh, motion made by Supervisor Lewis, seconded by Supervisor Granier. Any discussion? Any public comment? Anyone Nothing in the line? line. No one on the line. Thank you. All those in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed, none. Motion carries five zero. Thank you. The next item is Appeal 22-1972. Stephen McGurdy applies for the property located at 1009 University Drive, tax parcel 20-016-032-013. Uh, he's requesting a variance from Township Zoning Ordinance 200 23 b in order to construct an in-ground concrete pool, which would increase the impervious surface from the existing 20.6% to 21.9%, where 21% is the allowable amount. This is a very common uh, type of application we've seen especially over the last several years uh, during the pandemic, we recommend deferral unless the, uh, the board has a contrary sentiment. And hearing no motion, then we'll move to item C. Item C is one which is actually reapplication. Uh, the township has, has voted in, in the past for our office to participate. So the issue is gonna to be tonight, whether you want to continue, to continue participation or uh, to oppose or, or to defer, if that's something you would prefer to do. But I would assume based upon what discussion has been, that participation, at least at a minimum, is probably what we'd be directed to do. But the appeal is 21-1941, Camera and Olga Jean Troilo for the property located at 1674 Edgewood Road, tax parcel 20-021-003, otherwise known as the point for many people. Applicant is requesting a variance from Township Zoning Ordinance 200-38.6C1, so as to permit a density of 18.4 dwelling units per gross acre, whereas a maximum of 12 dwelling units per gross acre is otherwise permitted from uh, Ordinance Number 200-63.D1, so as to allow the new buildings to be set back eight feet from the uh, legal right-of-way 
of Langhorne Yardley Road, where is a 20-foot front yard setback from collector roads is otherwise required from 200-38.6 capital I-3, so as to permit the largest of the new infill buildings to be 163% larger than the average area of the existing historic structures, whereas new infill buildings are otherwise prohibited from being greater than 10% larger in all dimensions to an adjacent historic structure, and 200-38.3 capital A-7, so as to prevent an apartment over business use with no associated business and an apartment on the bottom floor, whereas the bottom floor would otherwise be required to be a business. As I indicated, uh, we have participated so far. Mr. Murphy, Mr. Troilo, and uh, Mr. Marshall are here, apparently on behalf of the applicant, and uh, there may be other interested people in the audience as well. So first we would need, I guess, a motion uh, to determine what the board would like to do, and then that would uh, add, allow for discussion to proceed. I'd like to make a motion to oppose appeal number 21-1941. Second. And Motion made by Supervisor Grenier, seconded by Supervisor Lewis. Any discussion? Sure. And James, if I may? Absolutely. Sure. Um, Dave, one clarification at our December 1st, 2021 meeting, uh, the board voted 3-2 to oppose. Is it to oppose? Um, okay. Variance. Well, there, and we split it out by different variance. Variance. Well, that's uh, right. I numbers. do remember that now. So the, yeah. the main one yeah. being uh, 200 dash 38.6 C1, which is the the density number. And then there were others that were, as you mentioned, there were other some of those have gone away since then. But the first one that we that we voted to oppose was the density one, which still which oh, it was a hybrid approach last time. Okay. Thank yes, it was. Clarification. Yeah. Um, okay. I was just checking the minutes because I was I knew we had yep. done something. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, no, yep. I, I do recall making it different the designations. Yeah. Um well, let, let me first as as the as the uh, liaison to the HARB and the Historic Commission and Planning Commission to some extent, um, you know, I've, I've been following this pretty closely the you know, last couple of years and, and then some. Um, so the, the Mr. Mr. Troilo, the applicant has come before HARB on multiple occasions. There's been a very open dialogue. Um, I can't see him on the screen, but I would like to commend commend the applicant for working with the HARB um, to to address to address many of the the issues concerns and questions that they had that they have had over time um, I think the I don't want to speak for them but I think the uh, where we started with uh, uh, much higher densities and and parking off site with no no sidewalks and and some some limited other features uh, to where we are now is, has been a very big improvement. So I'll say that up front. Um, I will say that um, the HARB in my conversations with them are still in, op in opposition to the, to the plan as it stands now, um, partially because of the size of the buildings. Um, I think there are still some concerns about the, the, I'm using air quotes here, the addition to the quill house um, and some of the finer points of, this, of the structures, um, possibly some, some finer points of the, of the layouts of the, uh, of the porches. Um, Harb's understanding was that uh, prior to going, going to the zoning hearing board that there would be another meeting at the Harb. I'm not sure if that was a miscommunication or just a strategy approach. It is what it is, but they they have they have informally requested that uh, response to their last set of comments be provided so that they could see where <laughs> where things ended up. So they've they've asked the board to oppose presently and to ask that ask the applicant to go back to the to the HARB to uh, address some of these issues. In terms of the zone, it, it, and there, there is a, a unique, there's a nuance here with in terms of the density from a zoning perspective versus the overlay perspective in that the zoning, from a zoning perspective, the over, you know, it talks about dwelling units per acre. I think dwelling units per acre allowed is 12, the request is 18.4. So we are putting more, dwelling units per acre than what is currently zoned for. Um, 
from a zone, strictly from a zoning perspective, that's a concern of mine, just given the location and nature of this parcel, right? It's a triangle at a very um, unique intersection, for lack of a better term, where there are some sight line issues and we have some concerns about potential traffic there. Um, from a historic perspective, I also have con some concerns because the when we look at historic integrity of buildings, you know, we want to put buildings in that even if they're uh, reproductions or maybe not historic buildings, but meant to meant to be built in the same vein or similar to the existing historic buildings, there are some that are much larger um, than the built surrounding buildings. So we want to be careful around that. Um, but I, I do, I, I will say, uh, Mr. Troilo, that I do appreciate um, considerations that you put in for the sidewalks for, um, you know, previously, I think we had, I used the comment 10 pounds of potatoes and a five pound sack. I think maybe we're down to seven and a half pounds of potatoes um, in that sack. So we're getting closer and we're, I, I do appreciate that we have the, the, uh, the parking all on site now. Um, you may not have heard earlier tonight, but one of our, one of our projects that we're funding now is ADA compliance, including the parking lot at, at Veteran Square Park because of how important that is to us. So I'm, I'm glad that we were able to pull that off. I do think on your plans, there was still a note that were submitted and I, I, this is probably a typo or a holdover where there was a note, I believe that 12 parking spaces were still to be at Memorial, I'm sorry, at Veteran Square Park. So no matter what, we should make sure we get that off the plans at some point, they're still there. Um, but generally I would, I'm, I'm still, voting in opposition to this, but it's, it's, it's not a, um, how do I say this? I, I see it going in the, in the proper direction. And it's not one of those things where uh, I think last time we, we voted on this in December, uh, we, we had some really big concerns. And I think since then you've, you've come, you've been going in the right direction. I just don't think we're there yet for us to go to zoning. I would like um, Harb's issues to be Address the final and get Harb's uh, get get Harb to be uh, recommending approval as well, and then going going forth together on this one. So we can, if we still need to go to zoning for something, we can uh, we can vote to just participate at, at some point. That that would be my hope. With that, with that, James, I'll hand it back to you. Sure. Thanks, Dan. Any other supervisor comments? I can't see the dais. Does somebody else have their, there we go. Nope. There's nobody up here has raised their hand. We do have, uh, like I said, the applicant, his attorney and uh, Mr. Marshall, formerly with the Heritage Conservancy at the uh, table, so. Sure, if any of the applicants want to uh, speak on the matter. Um, just said Murphy. Um, and I think Dan, for the most part, uh, fairly characterized the, uh, uh, the important changes that have been made to the plan since last uh, fall when the application was first submitted and when the board first uh, registered its objection to the application in that form in December of last year. And we've spent, as Dan's noted, I haven't, but CT uh, Troilo has spent the intervening five or six months meeting multiple times in an effort to uh, address the issues. And I think uh, where we think we are tonight is that other than uh, the an agreement to retain the quill house, I think all the other issues that Harb has raised have either already been addressed in the plan that you see, or if you know detailed architectural plans when the time would be appropriate to do that, we would do. So I think the biggest obstacle. Uh, from where we are is we are not willing to retain the quill house. We're retaining the Ishmael house, but not the quill house. We are going to reconstruct the quill house and it's the same location with one small addition to it, which is depicted on the plan. Dan's correct that the density has been reduced. The, all of the parking is now on site and the parking provided is more than what the ordinance requires. Uh, we've included sidewalks, um, the design for a pedestrian crossing to get to uh, the opposite side of Edgewood. We've added porches along the, uh, the buildings where appropriate. And I think all those issues were raised by HARP with CT and we've done all that. So um, 
we're here hopeful that everyone, as Dan indicated, has been operating in good faith. And hopefully we're at a point where we can now move ahead with the plan that's in front of you and which I had sort of outlined all these issues about two weeks ago when I made the request uh, to be considered this evening. So I think that's where we're at. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Any other uh, comments by supervisors? Uh, okay, there, may, uh, there may be other com comments. Uh, yes, I think uh, Dr. Samino, is that correct? Dr. Samino, who is a, uh, a, a adjacent Doctor, property you don't need owner. that mic. There's a mic there. Ed can keep his mic. I believe this microphone's working, and this one isn't. Okay. No, they're, they're both working. So uh, my name is Ernest Samino. Uh, I live in Newtown, but I own the property immediately adjacent to this project at 1666 Edgewood Road. And uh, I want to thank all the supervisors for their evening hours. I know uh, these are long meetings. I also want to appreciate that the Troilo Corporation uh, everyone, I think, would agree that they do nice construction work and everybody likes what they produce. However, I also want to point out that for the last 20 years, my wife and I have owned this property and new to Lower Makefield at that time as property owners, um, we realized that being in the historic commercial district, that there were going to be restrictions on what you could do with your property. And then when the traditional neighborhood overlay was put upon us, we kind of uh, accepted the fact that this is just more of the nature of restricted uh, development that we were willing to deal with. Um, but we're not that enthusiastic about it. And um, I see the rules that have been compromised. Uh, and this, in my understanding, this is the third rendition of the plan for the point because uh, the second rendition was discussed in April, changes were made and this to, now, to me is now the third rendition. And the thing that bothers me the most is the density, which is currently at 18.4 units per acre. This is a three quarter acre piece of property. Uh, by code, by zone, it should have nine units. Uh, uh, they started off, I think, asking for 22 per acre, which was 16 units. They've now compromised to 18 per acre, which is 14 units. And I would suggest that if I was in a decision-making capacity, I think a reasonable compromise for this historic property in the neighborhood development would be uh, 16 units per acre, which is higher than the zone allows, zoning allows, but would allow them to construct 12 units, not 14. With this further rendition and change, there would be even less parking on the property, less impervious surface, and um, more, more opportunity for green space. Um, so I think like uh, Mr. Grenier said, there's been a lot of compromise on the part of the Troilos and they're going in the right direction. But if I was in a decision-making capacity, I would ask them to come back with a fourth rendition that uh, was designed at 16 units per acre or 14 units for this piece of property. With the 14 units and looking at their current design, they could eliminate one of the buildings that's in the plan. They could provide more green space or more square footage. Uh, and the idea of overbuilding to 163% of established construction when the zone asks for no more than 10%, I think is uh, pretty extreme. And if they limited themselves to uh, 12 units for this piece of property, I think they'd still be in the range of you know, 140% over what uh, is currently present. Um, I think those are the comments that I wanna make. And I just wanna share with the board that I see this as a crossroads in the future of the historic zone and the neighborhood because my property is immediately adjacent to them. I have two historic buildings on my property. It's the 1881 Woodside Church and the 1950 Man's House. But there's a lot of green space on my property. So if I see development right next to me that uh, shrugs off the zoning ordinances that have been set up, either myself as a property owner or the future property owner who takes over after me will see the green space between Edgewood Road and the 1881 Chapel and say, here's a place we can build. Here's a surface that has not been developed. Let's put a uh, 200 square foot building in front of the chapel and this township doesn't really care if you see it from the road. Or Caddy Corner to the point is uh, Dave Miller's property that has the uh, Jesse Palmer Tavern. And from my review of meeting minutes, I believe he's subdividing his property and he's working on constructing something, uh, Caddy Corner to this point project, which will be new construction that somehow um, 
uh, respects the historic commission. But once the precedent is set that overdevelopment, modern development is allowed, then it's just going to pave the way for uh, less restriction on the historic zone. And as a property owner, I can go either way. I can, I can stand with the township and their zone and their ordinances and say, yeah, I can live with this. Or I can look to the Troilos who are saying, look, you've got to do something with abandoned property and, de, de, um, and delinquent buildings. And if this is the only way to make it profitable and the township agrees with them, then that's what's going to happen with the property adjacent and Caddy Corner. Those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, sir. Mr. Murphy. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Is there anybody else in the uh, in the meeting room who is, uh, wants to make any comments? I don't hear everybody else. Mr. Murphy, do you want to say anything else? Or... No. Okay. I, I had a question for Mr. Murphy, Dave, actually. Um, 14 units would include the demolition and, and elimination of that rear building, correct? Correct. Would the applicant be interested in doing that? I'm sorry, I, I don't understand the question. So I believe there was a the the building at the rear of the property. I'm, I I don't want to misname it. Um, not the one at the point, but the one at the rear that I think you you plan on expanding on. The, the cool Do we have an electronic copy of the plans that we could? Um, I thought I did. I was looking for it at some point. So yeah, yeah. It's the, the Quill House, I believe, is is what it's. Is what it's yeah, referenced what, at. what we're proposing is to remove the quill house and then we rebuild it a replica of it with a small addition on the back uh turning it from a two it's currently currently a two unit home we would make it into a three unit home the original configuration and then a small addition on the back of it i understand so so you would already plan on demolishing that and then there was a rebuild of that correct correct that's what we're proposing okay That's all I had. Any other supervisor questions? Hearing none, I'll entertain the motion to oppose. Is there any public comment? There? Oh, is there any public? I'm sorry. Is there any other public comment regarding this? I'm sorry, I just want to check. The no, there's no other public. Thanks. No. Okay. Anybody on the line? No. Nope. Okay. So the motion on the floor made by Supervisor Grenier is to oppose uh appeal 21-1941 so that is the as motion revised as revised correct um so all those in favor of opposing this raise your hand and say aye 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 opposed aye. Nay. Nay. motion is declined three votes to two make a motion to participate in appeal 21-1941. Okay, so now there's a motion on the floor to participate in Appeal 21-1941 made by Supervisor Weiss, seconded by Supervisor Blundy. Any discussion? So, James, did we get an answer from Mr. Troilo about his, his uh, willingness to go back and look at a reduced number of dwelling units? Yeah, we're not willing to do that, Dan. Any other comments or questions? Uh, I'm just going to weigh in for a second. You know, it, it's it's interesting how you can say the same sentence and hear it different ways. But um, you know, I, I think that the developer has done a yeoman's effort to be better. I suppose things could always be better. Um, that property is unique, including you know. Um, that point, we call it the point because it's a sharp little angle there that's hard to uh, navigate around. But the way to fix that is by taking down a building that apparently is very near and dear to the residents and that would not be a win. So um, I, I thank everybody for all the work that they've done on this. And I, I um, say that we move forward to zoning. Any other supervisor comments? Yeah, I think that um, I also have to commend the team, uh, both your father and yourself, uh, CT, for, for spending years to get to this point. Um, you, I think, did a great job considering that the overwhelming majority of the residents of this township want to keep 
both buildings, um, and you found a way to, to keep one and replicate another. And the question for the zoning and hearing board will be, is that worth the extra, um, the extra density? Um, and, you know, we're gonna to participate to make sure that we, you know, the township is served in the best interest. Um, however, this will be the zoning hearing board's decision. And we will, we will make sure that uh, everything is followed, all the uh, I's are dotted and T's are crossed. Yeah. Thank you, Supervisor Weiss. I, I just wanted to add the, the one, you know, sticking point, obviously, that, that I had with this was the parking offsite. Um, the developer has, has um, remedied this. Um, so as far as, you know, I was concerned, I was, I was pleased with the plan. Again, ideally, it's, it's a very unique parcel. Um, but I believe that the developer has come to the table with its highest and best use um, that's available based on the limitations and, and of what the lot lines are. So um, with that being said, I will call to question all those in favor to participate in zoning appeal 21-1941. Say aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 Opposed? I guess, yeah. So the motion carries 4-1 to participate in appeal 21-1941. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. That's all I have. I think uh, zoning inspections are planning. It's Mr. Majewski's uh, show right now. Thank you, Dave. Good evening, Jim Majewski here. Uh, you have before you the uh, request for consideration to approve the final payment number three for the Route 332 Mirror Lake Signal Interconnection Project to Armour and Sons Electric in the amount of $3,892.50. All work has been satisfactorily completed. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve final payment number three for the Route 332 Mirror Lake Signal Interconnection Project to Armour and Sons Electric in the amount of $3,892.50. Second. Motion made by Supervisor Weiss, seconded by Supervisor Grenier. Any discussion? Pardon me? Yes, I would like. I was the maker of the motion. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Supervisor Lewis, seconded by Supervisor Grenier. My apologies. Mm -hmm. Any other, any discussion? Who, I didn't hear who you got uh, confused, James. <laughs> I, I, I thought I said Lewis, but I must have said Weiss. I, brought, I apologize. Oh. I just you heard it right say, then, I guess, Dan. <laughs> I want to say something. I just want to say that you know this is a project long in the making, and and thanks to the CTC, um, when I was the liaison, it was one of the first questions they asked of me as to what what that was about. And um, sadly, sometimes it it takes longer to get things done, especially during the COVID year. So thanks to all of our partners and the staff of the township who have helped bring this to fruition. Any other supervisor comments? Ditto. <laughs> Any public comment? Nothing in the room. Anybody in the room. line? Thank you. Call to question all those in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Motion carries five, nothing. Jim, 13B. Uh, you have before you a resolution for the designation of agent who would be authorized to execute all required forms and documents for the flood mitigation grant that was recently awarded for the 1425 River Road house elevation project. This one's been a long one in the making. Uh, we actually got a grant for this about a decade ago and the project uh, fell apart. Uh, now the, uh, we resubmitted an application in 2020 and now it is before you. And once we have this in place, then we can go ahead and get a grant agreement all worked out with Pima, uh, with the township, and then start meeting with the homeowner and our engineering firm to work through the plans to update them uh, to elevate the house. So moved. Second. Motion made by Supervisor Weiss this time. Second, uh, second, <laughs> Supervisor Blundy. Any comments? Mr. Majewski, just so anytime we need to, anytime there's a homeowner that wants to raise a house and use FEMA grants, we have to have a we have to have a vote like this. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part. So anytime we have an individual homeowner that wants to go through this process, we have to have uh, an individual vote like this? That is correct. Okay. 
Is this Mr. Duffy's house? That is correct. Okay. Full disclosure, we used to be neighbors. I did not. He's he's moved a few years ago. Any other supervisor discussion? Any public comment? Hearing none, call to question all those in favor. Raise your hand and say aye. 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 Motion carries five nothing. Thank you very much, Jim. At this point, we're at agenda item number 14, general public comments. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to have a general public comment? Mr. Marshall, we, it's ironic that, by the way, we've had two Doug Marshalls in the room tonight. So I, I, I'm sorry, Jeff, you're right. I'm sorry. Thank you for correcting me. Yeah, but uh, Doug Marshall is now at, at, the, at the podium. Thank you, Jim, for correcting me on that. Mr. Marshall, if you could state your full name and address for the record, please. Uh, Doug Marshall, 1009 North Elbow Lane, Lower Makefield Township. Um, I wanted to really just ask for some clarification because I understand that the Sandy Luzinski open property, it was a farm or some agricultural land that she intended to till, um, has in some manner been purchased um, by the township or at least the development rights were purchased. And I, I've been driving you know, past there, um, it's not far from Yardley Crest where I live, um, and and I, I can't help but notice that it is enclosed. Um, and, and frankly, it's it's sort of like, uh, it's reminiscent of what somebody else had said to me earlier today. It's like a, a, a vegetation dump. I mean, it's overgrown weeds within the, the enclosure. Um, it's not being used by anyone. I mean, it's, it's you know, filled, I'm sure, with, with all kinds of rodents and ticks. There were a couple of houses built next door, one of which, um, you know, closest to this area as a young child, as best I can, I can tell. And I noticed, I guess, just by serendipity that the Patterson farm um, really was quite beautiful. It was open space, uh, green grass, look, there were some, some crops. And yet I'm looking at this, this I, really, it is an eyesore. I don't know if any of you here have actually driven by it. Um, I don't know where you live. Um, but if you do drive by it, I mean, you, you, you will realize that a lot of money was spent here. And I have to wonder to what extent, if at all, were there any conditions placed on the purchase? Um, that's, a, that's a lot of money and, and yet it's not available to anybody. Nobody can use it. It's not being tilled by anybody. It's not even being maintained either by Sandy Kaczynski, who's a very nice lady. I used to buy eggs from her um, or the township. So can, can somebody clarify this for me? I'm, I'll start, and I'm sure some of the other supervisors may want to chime in. There, uh, is, uh, Ms. Guzikowski, that property was at, uh, four or five years ago, I believe now, if I'm not mistaken, was probably six or seven. Uh, it, it's, it's been several years since the conservation easement, uh, the development rights were purchased, and you're correct, that's exactly what happened. And I guess in, in, in the big picture is the, the, the difference between owning a property and putting, having a conservation easement, which is what we did with Patterson Farm, because the township owns that property and maintains that property as opposed to buying the development rights, but the owner still maintains the property. In fact, just down the road, um, I guess on the other side of you, uh, I think, is uh, where uh, Karen Gates has her property too, which is a farm. Now she maintains it, so that, that's not an issue there, but she has the same she also sold her development rights to the township several years ago as well. I don't know that in the original conservation easement uh, conveyance that there's any language that talks about anything specific about property maintenance. Certainly in general, we have a property maintenance code that, that uh, all residents have to abide by. So that may or may not be implicated here. I don't know, I, I, I can't say that. So that, that would be the fallback, so. If I can, Mr. Marshall, yeah. what specifically are, are you observing with the property? I mean, if you do drive by the property, and I think it's clear to anyone, it's essentially, well, one, it's enclosed. But I guess that, given what, what um, Mr. Trulove said, is, is her right. It's her property. If she wants to enclose it, she can, I imagine. But it is, um, it, it's, it's not maintained. It's literally a growth of, of weeds, which are now approaching, I guess at, at times, you know, four feet, um, you know, there, there's, uh, it, it, it's not at all tended, uh, it's not mowed. Um, it's, it really is an eyesore. I mean, it's hard to describe something that so few people have ever seen. We did spend a lot of money on that property. Um, every other piece of open source or development right 
situation that I've seen personally didn't turn out quite this way. Um, I don't know why the purchase was made if, in fact, there were no conditions placed on it. So, I mean, is there no local ordinance or, or you know, statutory? Uh, you know, yeah, yeah respectfully, the property maintenance code specifies specifies the level of growth within a property. So when you see something above 12 inches in terms of grass, that's in violation of the property management code. And that person is typically warned and then cited when it gets above a certain level. However, um, there may be cases where she has a retaining, uh, retention basin that you want higher growth grasses um, and you don't wanna mow that down. If you've observed something that is above 12 inches that, that you can see visually, all you would need to do, uh, and <laughs> Mr. Majewski's right behind you, uh, is, uh, is send an email to uh, Mike Kirk at lmt.org, which is, is he M. Kirk? Mike, Mike K. Mike K. Okay, at, at LMT. Yeah. And I will say that Mr. Majewski, for what it's worth, this, this guy's a real gentleman. I've bothered him three or four times. He's always patient. Um, he always educates me about what's, you know, what can, yes or no. And uh, so, so I do want to thank him, all the rest of you and the people on the screen there. I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, yes, I know uh, Mr. Marshall did send an email today and uh, requested information on the easement, and we are looking it up so we can provide that to everyone. It is an agricultural property, agricultural properties aren't really, they're not kept lawns. So we'll, we will take a look at it. I mean, it could yeah. be hay, right? She could be growing. Exactly. Well, and, and that's the thing. We wanna make sure that they're actually growing an agricultural product and not just letting the land. The, the whole point of what was, I think we, stuck, I, what was it? 3.7 million or, or, or more was paid for the conservation, was paid for the easement here. So that, that, to your point, Mr. Marshall, that's a hefty sum to be paying to try and keep a plot of land in active ag, which is not easy to do for anyone, especially 44 acres. It's not a necessarily income producing uh, size for a farm. Um, it's not easy, but that's the why they, so much money was paid for the easement. Um, so we, we wanna make sure that they're honoring the uh, conditions of, of said easement. If it, if it needs to be an ag and, it, and it's not an ag, then we have to address that. If it needs to be an ag and it's just, maybe they're growing something differently that looks a little different, we're not used to it, that's, that may be okay. Um, but that's something that we have to look into to make sure that they're honoring the easement. To your point. And what I can do is send that email to Mike K at lmt.org and uh, you know, uh, maybe he can come up with something. I. I do think that it's more than 12 inches. I, perhaps I'm wrong. I, you're a, a large gentleman, Mr. Lewis. I think it comes up, um, you know, almost to your, you know, your belt buckle. Uh, you know, some of them. That, you know, I think that's more than 12 inches. But I could be wrong. And um, so, so let me leave it at that. I had one other issue, but I'll, you know, I, I, I'll just say very quickly. I noticed there was some custom homes that were going to be built at Derbyshire and Big Oak Road but it looked like they were gonna be built in you know, completely forested area. And I wanted to confirm that some of those trees are gonna to have to be maintained. I understand from Mr. Majewski, there's like this requirement that like 80% of the trees are maintained and yet the whole area is just filled with big trees. Um, but but I'll, I'll carry on you know, with the conversation. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll speak with you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, any other public comment in the room? None in the room. Anybody on the line, public comment? Uh, one, one on the line. Thank you. If you could please state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, yes, Kathleen Herko, 1450 Dolington Road. Thank you, your comment? Um, so just a comment on the Troilo presentation. Uh, I just wanted to thank Dan for um, speaking on behalf of the HARB. Um, I follow those meetings um, pretty closely and it was my understanding and I believe the HARB members understanding that Mr. Troilo would be coming back um, to show them this plan um, before going to the 
zoning. So um, I don't think that was the, you know, was the right thing for them to do. And instead of commending them for the work that they're doing, um, I personally think they should be embarrassed for what they've let happen to those homes and um, how they've been just letting them deteriorate deteriorate for all these years. Um, They certainly shouldn't be commended and they should be trying a little harder to follow um, the HARB recommendations. And I just wanted to point that out. It's very disappointing. Thank you, Ms. Herko, for your comments. Any other comments on the line? Nope. Thank you. Hearing none, moving on to agenda item number 17, any other business? James. Yes, sir. Um, I had, I had brought something up. Uh, I don't know. I have them ever meetings three or four meetings ago, maybe, um, regarding the request to put the, uh, something akin to a human relations commission on the, on the agenda for discussion. Um, I know we've had some back and forth about it. Um, when I brought that up, it was one, it was something back then it was just something that I thought was a, a good idea to move forward just based on the general state of things. Um, and I, you know, there's, and I understand our history with that and how we've tried to address it in the past. And I, I appreciate that since that, since even my last request and maybe even some of our back and forth about it, that it, we've had the, the uh, concurring opinions, let's say that go along with the Roe v. Wade decision that put in writing some of the further restrictions that certain that, that are being contemplated against our LGBTQ plus communities in terms of, um, it looks to, you know, I'm not an attorney, but when I read some of the stuff that's been put out there about um, potentially overturning the right to same-sex marriage and, and other things related and, you know, related to discrimination, in my opinion, um, I, th- I would, I, I feel even more strongly about putting this on the agenda for, for uh, future discussion. Uh, I think there are some very good, I, I understand our concerns about, um, I don't want to say over-regulating, but uh, h- how to address those issues. And I think I think there have there are some very good models out there. Um, Upper Dublin Townships, one just by chance that uh, actually has a pretty good one. Um, but I, without getting into the details of what that would look like, I just, I just, I just, you know, I've been asked by a lot of people lately since the since the Roe v. Wade uh, decisions and concurring opinions and other things surrounding that uh, why and I think others have been approached at at events separately as to why we don't have one given given who you know given that most of our neighbors do I honestly I don't have a good answer for them anymore um, so that's, that's not I just wanted to put it out there to see if we can put it on the agenda for discussion. Um, see if there's something we can do about, see if there's something meaningful that we can do, because I think there are, quite honestly, I do think there are some real, real concerns now. There are very concrete concerns that have been stated on the public record, um, not by us, but um, by other officials out there that, that are very concerning. So I think it's could be our time to step up and do what we can locally to uh, help our, help our residents in that community. Thanks, Dan. Any other business by any supervisors? I guess I would just uh, concur on that and say that, you know, after reviewing the Dobbs decision and it's, uh, uh, there are other things that the township may have to consider uh, given the current political environment in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And I would want to make sure that, uh, um, you know, that we can protect Lower Makefield residents as much as possible and those that travel to Lower Makefield uh, to receive uh, uh, care. So um, it's a troubling decision, and I think we should see what we can do to mitigate that as much as possible. So something for us to consider. Thanks, John. Anybody else? Okay, moving next uh, to agenda item number 18, appointments to boards and commissions. I don't believe we have any. Uh, so with that, Chair, did yes, you supervise reports yet? Did I miss that? No, you didn't. I completely <laughs> jumped over that. 
Thank you so much. Uh, going back to number 16, Supervisor Reports, I have nothing to uh, report at this time. Uh, Supervisor Weiss? I have nothing to report. Thank you. Supervisor Grenier? I think I already did my report through it. Hardware is the only one that met, so I'm good. Got it. Supervisor Blundy? I don't, think, I don't have anything to report. Thank you. And Supervisor Lewis? I'll pass at this time. Thank you, sir. So now we are back to uh, number 18, appointments to boards and commissions. I don't recall us having any, so we'll go to an adjournment. I'll entertain So moved. It's my <laughs> favorite <laughs> line item. <laughs> By Mr. Finger, Supervisor uh, Weiss seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Everybody. Have a good evening.